Yeah, there we go. Hello, <laughs> hello. So, and um, particularly if you're if you're joining me on Facebook or on YouTube live stream, um, I've got uh, got folks here with us today as well. So, thanks for those who've turned up. So we continue our um, continue our our kind of walk through the Gospel of Matthew. Um, so last week we 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 looked at Jesus's introduction of the things that were traditionally to do with Jewish righteousness, prayer, fasting. Um, and um, an alms giving, but we we jumped over a few verses because they're the Lord. They represented the Lord's prayer. So um, today we're going to be um, looking much more seriously at the issue of the Lord's prayer. I say much more seriously. We're doing half an hour on <laughs> on the Lord's prayer, but it, at least we get an opportunity to kind of go through it line by line because obviously it's it's quite a key quite a key passage. Um, so here we go. Here goes the title. So the Sermon on the Mount, part seven, pray like this, um, which we often think of, as, the, as I say, as the Lord's Prayer. Just to give a little bit of context, I actually made a mistake last week. None, none of you pulled it up on me or pulled me up on it, I should say. Um, I had these verses and verse eight was actually incorrect. Verse eight was actually verse six, which is the um, the problem when in the morning before you do this, you kind of go in and you're cut, cutting and pasting verses onto PowerPoint slides to, to present them. And I'd left verse six up there. So verse eight actually read as verse six. But actually, it's useful to revisit it because it gives us a little bit of context as we kind of uh, as we come to look at the Lord's Prayer. Um, and, and interestingly, I normally start with prayer, but today I forgot. So, <laughs> so Father, we just want to kind of follow the pattern and acknowledge you and um, and ask that uh, just our, the, the consideration we give to your words is part of the way we honour your name. In Jesus name. Amen. Um, so, yeah, fortunately, it says in praying, don't talk with tedious repetition like the Gentiles do. <laughs> so uh, which is useful. I, I was that that verse always for me has come alive after I did um, a trip to visit some missionaries in that we had um, in Tibet. Um, I won't mention much more than that at the moment. And we went around a, a, a Buddhist um, temple and um, the um, and there were people who all walk round the, the temple in one direction because that's part of their prayer is walking around. And as they go, they hit these prayer wheels that spin in a certain direction. And that that issue of the tedious repetition kind of really came home to me. The the the, the way they think that they'll be heard for their many words. Um, the missionaries that I was actually weird told me what we're going to do is we're going to walk the opposite way round, and that sounds like you'd been deliberately rude. But of course, what then happens is people try and say, "Oh, you're," they think to yourself, "Oh, you're you're strange foreigners. You don't know." And they explain um, that this is the way round you you walk, and then that would give them an opportunity, you see, to have conversations with people. <laughs> so, kind of a subtle little bit of kind of mission strategy there is that uh, that idea of walking around saying the same old prayers. If you say them enough times, then maybe they'll get listened to. But Jesus says, so don't be like them because your father knows what you need before you ask him. So this is part of the context. The verse is just before he teaches and we looked at last week, except we didn't look at that verse eight because I had accidentally put verse six on there. <laughs> um, don't be like them. Your father knows what you have need of before you ask him. And I can always remember in my own early evangelism days doing some work on a seafront once having a conversation with someone you just couldn't quite get their hand around it. If God knows, then why do you have to bother asking him? And actually, it's a really valid question. Um, but, but actually, it gets right at the heart of what the Christian gospel is about, which is the relational side. It, it's not just somehow um, doing things in the right spiritual way so that spiritual life works for you and it all goes the way you should. Um, in one sense, then, if the spiritual world was like that, then it would be no different from the physical world. If you come up with certain little rules and as long as you follow the rules, you get what you want out of the slot machine, um, then then actually that's the way the physical world works. <laughs> there are rules, rules of physics. And as long as I don't try and do things that break the rules of physics, it kind of works the way I expect it should. Um, so you'll you'll pick up actually one of the things I, I often find and I'm, I'm a little bit um, suspicious of, if I can put it. I, I understand why we do it. And I think the reason as Jesus re repeats this there is a human tendency to feel that our re repetition, constant, constant repetition, um, somehow achieves something. And if somehow we just prayed the right way and we had the right formula of words. And so I've heard really good kind of Bible teachers talk about the importance of how your word, how you word your prayer and how you should do it and so on. And I kind of understand it. But but the reality is <laughs> that the spirit interprets for us, really. <laughs> 
And so sometimes we'll say, oh, Lord Jesus, thank you for being a great father. And we think we've just confused the father and the son here. We get our words all jumbled up. <laughs> But the Spirit is the one who interprets for us. That's And at the heart of it, it's not about getting the right words. It's about somehow the leaning in um, to God. And, and that really comes out. So Jesus, um, so Jesus unpacks. Um, so then you pray like this. Um, um, I've dropped the word when because it's not there. <laughs> um, but it's kind of an implied when. So, so then implied when, when you pray like this, pray like this. Um, so the so then in that sense is a, is a reflection to the verses we just had. It's about tedious repetition and lots of words and and so on. And it, and Jesus starts and, and what he does is he's going to give us a handful of lines. Um, and there is a real sense. I can remember as a young Christian going um, doing the course, um, Will You Not Tarry One Hour by Larry Lee, where he takes the Lord's Prayer and breaks up all of the lines of it. And we and teaches you how you can pray it for at least an hour. <laughs> so you can pray the Lord's Prayer for an hour a day. Um, but the reality is, the way you break the, the subjects up, you could easily pray for a day. But the context, of course, is Jesus is also is, is saying, you don't need to do that. It's, you don't need to feel, unless I've got four hours in hand, and I'm going to really work hard at it. Because um, I can show you there's, there's something about simple approaches that we want to bring. And it's not that you're not going to unpack these from time to time and you're going to lay them out in a little bit more detail. But but actually, in a simple sense, your father understands. And this is if this is all you've got time for, at least lean in in this way. At least lean in, in this way. And he, and he starts with that our father who is in heaven, which which immediately um, puts a dynamic on the, the way in which we're praying. First of all, it's our. And so I recognise in one sense, my prayers aren't selfish. They're, they're part of a community. Um, that, that Actually, I find myself having to think about the, the wider context of what I'm praying for. So straight away, it becomes incongruous if my prayer becomes, um, I need a Porsche. <laughs> uh, because that's really unique. And to me, if everybody had Porsches, well, then they'd actually be called VWs or something, wouldn't they? So so it's 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 something about the, the corporate nature actually changes the dynamic of how we're going to approach it. And then we put the word Father in there. Our Father who is in heaven. And that suddenly, of course, includes the hour as well, because he's he's not just my father, he's our father. So I'm coming to him as his son, but I, I'm, I'm not unique. Um, so my prayers aren't going to be, in one sense, divisive. Um, they need to be inclusive. Um, and, um, and he is my father, so he is, there's something of his wisdom that I'm acknowledging up front and his priority of power and authority and his resources. Uh, um, and at the very, very simplest idea, um, the, the word we often translate as praise um, from the Old Testament is simply the word Yudah, which is also used to translate the word to acknowledge. It's just to recognise, it's to turn your attention. And we're actually doing that. We're turning our attention to the Lord. So so prayer starts with a kind of a sense of I'm going to orientate my attention towards him. Worship starts just by acknowledging he's there. And we're doing that then in that phrase, hallowed be your name. I'm acknowledging there's something about you and your nature. Um, again, Jesus would have been an Aramaic speaker, speaker which is based on Hebrew. In, in, ha in Hebrew, the, the word for, for nature and renown, fame, and is all the same word, se um, Shem, that we translate name. There's something about everything about who you are, which I want to honour with my time. And so there's, there's just a kind of a simple sense as we come in, of I'm going to turn my face towards you, I'm going to acknowledge my need for you, what you are to me, who you, who you are to this more corporately, my position within that framework. And that's the beginnings of how we kind of start our prayer. And we can find different words for it, but the, the, the kind of little phrase, the little title, the headline that Jesus gives. Um, we know that Jesus was regularly going off to pray. <laughs> so we know his words would expand these things. It's not just reciting the words, but the concept that is captured is quite simple and straightforward. Okay, here I am. I've closed my eyes so I don't see the world. I'm trying to find you. I'm trying to lean into you. I'm trying to know you. Are you over there? I'm not sure. Maybe over here. But somehow I'm in that process and I'm in that place of leaning. Um, and, and that's how prayer starts. It starts in that way. So we, I just put at the top, we're effectively, we're just acknowledging and honouring. 
And then the next line is, is of course, we all know it. <laughs> um, there, there's a couple where I've done a slight different translation, but most most of the time, um, I think the, the way we know the Lord's Prayer is absolutely correct. It's really good. Um, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And there is a kind of an accepting of God's agenda, but there is also a, a sort of an implicit sense of I have a partici- I have a participation in this. God has an agenda, but I have a participation in it because I am declaring. And the, the actual structure of the, the Greek grammar is much more de- de- um, declarative or it's like an order. Your kingdom come and your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Well, we've already acknowledged that God is in heaven and um, and we're saying here his will is being done up there. But now actually it's me who's on earth and, and I'm the one who's declaring your kingdom will come and your will be done. And so that's why I put there's a kind of a sense in this this phrase that what we're actually doing is we're accepting God's agenda um, and in him there is no darkness but we're also accepting my responsibility to be part of how that gets released onto this earth. Um, and I always find the um, the model of Joshua in the Old Testament is a really good one. So Joshua's name actually means Jesus. <laughs> it's the same name. It's the older version of Jesus, Yehoshua, instead of Yeshua, um, as it becomes in it by the time you get to Aramaic speakers. Um, but it's the same the same fundamental name. And so so Joshua, God says to him, wherever you put the sole of your foot, that's what that's the land I'm giving you. Um, and of course, we are part of Christ and where we where we stand and put our feet. He lives in us. He dwells in us. That that land, in one sense, is what we have responsibility for. So we have responsibility for where God's put our feet <laughs> to release his agenda here. Um, so I, I accept his agenda and I, and actually that makes me ask questions about what's going on around me. And if I'm going to declare that his agenda, which is a heavenly agenda, should be happening on earth, how do I do that? Um, there are things that are outside of my control, so I'm looking to him to do something supernatural through me. But equally, it puts me in a place where I have to take responsibility as well for how can I be his agent? <laughs> How can I be his angel, his messenger? Um, there are plenty of human people who got the Bible calls angels, messengers. Um, but we always want to think of the divine kind. <laughs> we don't recognize sometimes I'm his feet. So here I am. So your kingdom come, your will be done on earth um, as it is in heaven. And um, there was another point I just saw there and I've just lost my train of thought. It might come back to me in a second on the on this issue. Oh yeah, I know what it is. <laughs> um, one of the things that I, I've often found, and and I, and this is just a few like pastoral wisdom, you know, particularly when you've got a really intractable situation, you and and we want to be able to pray for something. So there's a there's a so um, and I I want to be sensitive as I say it because I raise situations that happen all the time in various places and churches. But there might be a child who's who's really sick with cancer. Obviously, I've been that child on a, in my past. And the, the church wants to pray for them. And, and one of the things you find <laughs> is that we, we often in, in church, we don't um, pray the way Jesus said later on in Matthew, where he talks about if two or three are agreed in all things in prayer. The, the, the Greek is actually, it's kind of coincident. We're, we're very aligned in our prayers. Very often something like this happens that's tragedy. And because emotionally people want to deal with it differently. So some feel like, it's, it's our lack of faith if this child doesn't get cured. Others think, I, I've known because I've prayed before and nothing's going to happen, so I just need to prepare myself and therefore I want to emotionally get ready for when the child dies. And we've got all these different emotional agendas going on and we end up praying in a very non-unified way. Um, and one of the things I've always tried to do is, is to ask folks, you know, um, if, this, if we were in heaven, <laughs> if we were in heaven, what do you expect would happen? OK, so so by my understanding, the only authority I have as a mandate um, without it being kind of stu- um, sort of superficial or hypocritical kind of level of faith where I just declare, I believe this is going to happen because somehow I believe my faith is stronger if I just live in kind of unreality. But the only thing I really have to kind of pray for is that this isn't this child's time. So as I look at it, I think to myself, this child won't die 
in heaven. So I'm not going to pray that you deal with our emotions when we're when we're looking at it now. We're going to be looking for that breakthrough. So it's really much more just about how do we manage where there's a group of people with different agendas. <laughs> Is that on the whole, we will often find there is a coincidence that we tend to agree that if if we if everything was perfect, if we were in heaven with the Lord right now, this is what we'd be looking for. So let's pray towards that because we can now agree on that. That it's when what we're praying for on earth is what we would expect for heaven, if that makes sense. So it's it's a it's a rather straightforward little thing, and it can feel manipulative, but actually I just found it quite helpful to help kind of bring a sense of togetherness on on those tricky issues that we sometimes get involved in prayer for where there's all sorts of fears there's all sorts of other emotions going on that's okay let's all settle those things how would it be in heaven okay let's let's pray for that let's pray towards that so i'm not making a claim therefore that i have a word from the lord that this is all going to work out fine and everything's going to be hunky-dory i'm just saying what i don't what i believe is this is the way it would be if if that was the case hopefully that makes sense um (laughs) And then he says, give us today our daily bread. So we ask for needs. Well, that's interesting because the context, of course, was your father who's in heaven knows before you ask. But as I pointed out, Jesus didn't say you don't therefore need to ask. <laughs> um, and that that's because actually what really the Lord's looking for is us to develop the sense of relationship with him. That actually we, we become, uh, it becomes a two-way conversation. And to kind of reflect back on on the, the verse we just looked at, just trying to explore it. And there's an awful lot of things I've asked for that I've not got. You know, that's the reality. Um, but equally, I, I've seen the most remarkable answers to the prayer that really kind of fry my head sometimes when you stop and think about it. Think, like, did that really happen? Um, <laughs> just the way those things happened. And 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 my 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 hundred percent conviction really with this is 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 when we do get into the habit of asking, we we don't just see because somehow we because we ask for so much, we get so much. You know, we ask for something trivial. Lord, I want a bus to come quickly, and the bus turns up. You know, not that, that's kind of random. If you if you ask enough things like that, you'll get a lot of answers to prayer. But there are sometimes there are those things that that are just so. What happened there? <laughs> that was that was really ridiculous. So actually, to ask is a really good thing from our point of view. The Lord wants us to be involved. You see, if we hadn't asked, we just needed it. We would never ever notice that the coincidence. Um, as as exactly what it is, that serendipitous coincidence, that thing that doesn't really make sense. It's kind of like it turned up just when you needed it. Um, I, I've got, again, I've got so many stories like this, uh, but I always wonder, it's, it's, it's relatively trivial. We Some years back, when it, suddenly I found myself without any paid employment and my wife hadn't it was, had, was trying to get her own lo- local business going, the things that actually led to me having a stroke, probably. <laughs> um, money was so tight, and we had to go and visit some family members of Judith's family. So we we and um, it was around Christmas time. So we drove, and I was <clears throat> I knew that I had some money going into my account, um, but because of the the bank holidays and everything, I wasn't sure it was going to be there. We went to the petrol station. I filled up with petrol. I went to pay for it. There was no money in my account. <laughs> um, I, I had two 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 accounts, and there was no money in either of them. And the guy behind the thing, because there was a queue, gave them back to me and said, try the cash point over there. So, so I took my cards to the, and I said, Lord, I really don't, you know, don't know what to do. I was kind of praying as we went. And I got to the cash point, put my card in, put the numbers in. No money came up on my card, you know. <laughs> and, uh, and I took my card out. And as I turned around, there was a young man standing behind me um, who, who um, uh, I, we must, we married him. He was a young man. He'd, he'd since got divorced. It's very sad. But his, it was his wife who left, not him. Um, but he was standing behind me, and he said, "Oh, hello, Chris. What are you up to?" And I just said, "Oh, I just said, just my, I've got absolutely. I'm just trying to pay for petrol. I haven't got any money in my thing." He goes, I said, "Oh, don't worry. I'll get it for you." <laughs> he got the money out of the account for the petrol thing, and I went in, paid for it, and I said, "Oh, I'll pay you back after Christmas." He said, "No, no problem." He said, "I've just had a really good blessing. You've done lots for me over the years." And, and, you know, that's, that's one of those things. It's the, it's not, it's not the event. It's the coincidence. It's the, it's how it turns up just as you pray. Does that make sense? There's an awful lot of miracles that really come down to timing. If you think about it, <laughs> um, a huge amount of miracles are really just about timing. It's no miracle for water to get turned into wine. It happens every year in the South of France, you know, 
Um, but it just takes a long period of time. It takes it takes a year. <laughs> um, when Jesus does it, it only takes a couple of minutes <laughs> or however long. It, it's a, a huge amount of miracles are really timing. And if we're not in that place of asking and bringing the needs to the Lord, we don't notice those timings. We just we just miss them. So it's, it's kind of good for our faith to get into the habit. And yes, there are ways where we recognize there are sometimes we pray for things that we don't get. But that's partly because we're part of an hour and there's a bigger context. And it's not just about me and my wants um, and so on. Um, and forgive us our sins or forgive us our debts as, as we also have forgiven our debtors. Um, I, 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 I prefer the more modern translation because the word isn't sins. I mean, it's 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 a thing that's owed. It's something that's owed. Um, and and I do have a thing. Part of the reason I, I often do my own little version of translation is not because I think I'm a better translator. It's because I, I have a feeling that we've got so used to reading religious words that we don't read them the way they should be read because we hear them with all of the nuance of kind of religion around them. I, I used to do a lot of um, schools work, you know, and um, the thing I'd noticed with schools work is if you ask a kid to read a passage from the Bible, they put on a silly voice as they start to do it. There's something about the fact that they're biblical words that somehow changes our emotional connection with them. So I often like to, and I actually think debts is the more correct word, sins makes it sound as if it's all about morality. Um, actually, it's about how we get ourselves into a place where we do owe. We owe God, and that is sin. But equally, there are all sorts of people who owe us and done, treated us the way they should have done. So so I, I think debts is a good word there. Um, and, and don't carry us into trials, but draw us away from evil. Again, I've done a very similar thing here. <laughs> I've, I've just slightly changed the words, um, but actually they're slightly more accurate. So I, because I'm conscious of the fact, so that the actual word that we translate as lead is much me carry into. It's, it's so, and, and actually the idea that God is carrying us um, actually is nicer than he's leading us. We can get upset. Well, I've got to follow, I've got to follow God because he's leading me. But actually the word is he carries us. <laughs> so he's carrying us through life and suddenly we're in trials rather than temptations. Now, they are trials that test you, which is why they've translated them as temptations. But that I think it's easier sometimes if you see they are, they are they're, they're difficult times. Don't carry us into those. What I'm doing here is I'm expressing my desire. But then draw us away from evil. We have deliver us from evil. <laughs> And um, the draw us away is actually because the, 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 the Greek word is actually like a current does in the water. Um, a current actually sweeps you out. <laughs> so so we don't actually have a good word like that. So we, we often translate it as rescue or whatever, um, rescue or deliver. But it's actually draw us away. So as I'm thinking about life and you are carrying me, but as I'm heading towards things, I am giving my request to you that I would rather not be not be tested if you like put through the trials too much <laughs> um i'd rather that somehow you were able to draw me in a way and actually i sometimes I, therefore i need to allow myself to be drawn and so on but actually what we're doing is we're telling god what, what help we need in the situation and and part of the reason i think it's helpful to translate like this is because people do get into a bit of a headache because somehow god is leading us into temptation I, he's kind of deliberately putting us through the thing. And, and actually that seems somehow incongruous with the nature of God. But actually, as you carry us, um, my request is that I want to avoid the things I'm not going to I'm going to fail at. <laughs> um, now, sometimes he still takes us through those things. It is a request. Um, but draw us away from those things. And we're actually kind of getting through the list of the types of things that we should be praying around. It finishes then with yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. Which isn't there in the best tra best tra um, manuscripts and texts, but it, it's there in Luke's version as well. And then it comes into later versions of Matthew. I've left it in there because I think we know it that way. And it's perfectly appropriate to kind of conclude your prayer, to acknowledge who God is. Um, his is he's got the final decision on all these things. That's what really I'm saying. Um, I've prayed all of these things. I've told you I don't want to go into that trial. I would rather you drew me away from those evil things. <laughs> um, but actually, it's, yours is the yours is all the authority and power and everything else. So we'll accept that. So we're kind of in that in that mix. And and then there's a, a little caveat, a little kind of addition. There's something to note. 
and I, I've actually started with note this, which is totally fine. There's a there's a tiny little Greek word there, which um, just it kind of plays a grammatical role. It makes it makes one thing causative of the other. So we often translate it as because or for, um, and so it could be all of these things. So I've just gone for note this because you've got a variety you can use. So note this little side note. Um, if you forgive people their slip ups, so we often think if you forgive people their how else do we normally translate it? They're trespasses. Trespasses is an old word. It's a religious word. It kind of has strange connotations for us. It, it's not incorrect because it's actually about misstepping. Trespass. I misstep. If you if you forgive people, so what trespass originally meant was much more like we would say slip ups now, which is what the Greek actually is saying. Um, it's actually um, let's see if I can get the, uh, the the kind of root words that it's it's para, which is alongside or alongside something. Um, and it's it's kind of stumbling, stumbling alongside. So you're you're stepping or stumbling alongside. Um, so slip ups is not bad. <laughs> if people forgive you your slip ups, your heavenly Father will also. If, sorry, if you forgive people their slip ups, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. Um, so actually, we're there's something to note here, which is that as part of this prayer, going back to where it started, we are putting ourselves into the process of what we're praying. We're not just standing to the side asking of God to deliver to the side. We're just as, as uh, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Oh, all right. Okay, here I am on earth. So there are some things I'm requesting to release your authority to work through me, but equally I might become the answer to that prayer. And we've got a very similar thing going here. If you're forgiving, if you're a forgiving sort of person of their slip ups, and your heart, your heavenly Father will also forgive you, but. If you don't forgive people their slip ups, neither will your father forgive your stumbles. Um, the, the word stumbles is exactly the same. I just changed it because it kind of made more sense from an English reader point of view. But it's the same slip ups. <laughs> um, and it, it's not I don't I don't believe it's it's meant because um, we have to understand the, what a what a phrase is used for, not just um, what it says, if that makes sense. Um, Jesus is putting it there to emphasize that actually. Our, the, 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 this prayer is a relationship thing. It's not a formula thing. And part of the way the relationship things, we need to be participating in the nature of the relationship. And so if the nature of the relationship is about the flow of forgiveness, then actually we need to be participating in that ourselves. Um, so so he, he can, we have that little kind of um, side issue, that kind of note that's added to the prayer, which I think is a quite a nice way because it kind of sums up, as I say, really that the whole of the prayer is like that. As we're making our requests known and somehow we're submitting ourselves into the context. Um, and, um, and that doesn't preclude the fact it's not all just psychological because sometimes things come that just are totally outside your <laughs> in response to prayer that are totally outside of your ability to change them. And, and yet the Lord does them. So I think those are my. Yeah, thanks for watching. <laughs> thanks for watching. So. Um, so those are those are just my thoughts then this afternoon. Does anyone want to ask any questions or or share any thoughts? Um, I know Bob's probably had to leave or is about to go, so we'll, we'll say goodbye to you, Bob, <laughs> as you you rush off. Anyone want to ask anything or say anything? Yes, I've left something in the chat actually. That um. That you... oh, okay. Yeah. I, I must go. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I love the fact that debts are forgiven, i.e. the consequences of my actions, yeah. Oh, good question for Bob, which I haven't looked at, so I can't tell you. Is is there a different word in Luke's version? <laughs> so, um, any, anyone else want to ask anything or comment on anything? That, that, that was interesting about um, getting people to agree with you and what you were saying about that. Um, and yeah, on the sorry what was i saying you were saying about when you were praying and and getting oh, oh yeah that's right the, the, the place of agreement yeah. Yeah. yeah some power and some dynamic there when um there are groups of people i don't know focusing on the same issue or or, or being yeah. uh, some seems to be some sort of spiritual principle that i i think because i i think although it's a different passage which is in matthew but but he talks about that unity in prayer if, if anybody if if um you know if it, um, was it any two are agreed in my name but th there's an agreement there's something about and i and i often find in prayer times when there's something emotional it does there isn't really an agreement so somehow we've got to find a place 
Um, it seems to me, and as I say, I'm not a big fan of being too legalistically formulaic about prayer. You know, you, um, I find it helpful from a teaching point of view. So, yeah, I'm always pragmatic. You know, when I was a kid, they taught, I got taught two things, you know, because I, because my parents made me go to so many Christian things. I got two contradictory messages. And one place they taught me you should pray um, acts, <laughs> ask, confess, thanks, supplication. Somebody else told me it was a cat. <laughs> ask, confess, um, uh, acknowledge and thanks <laughs> um, so the, the formulas can be kind of useful and this is one sense Jesus gives us a formula here's some rough things but the formula is actually teaching us in one sense this relational thing and relationship often is therefore it, it doesn't surprise me that Jesus talks later about there being unity in our prayer that something about finding what we can agree on so that we're all agreeing it together. Whereas I've been in so many meetings where you get one agenda and, and then somebody prays a different agenda. because they And they're, what they're really trying to do is manage their emotions. Um, that can sound a little bit trite when I say it, but in all seriousness, I think an awful lot of, when there's something difficult to pray about, a lot of our verbal prayers are about us managing our emotions in the presence of the Lord, which is, I don't want to be overly critical of, but it's not, <laughs> it's not the perhaps that more focused and intercessory approach. But yeah, thanks for that comment, though. Yeah, we do, we do like uh, our little rules and regulations, don't we? Because it makes it makes us feel secure if we've got yeah uh, some that we can follow. Whereas relationship is much um, woollier and um, challenging, really. Yes, <laughs> and I, and I like, the, the thing I like is 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 that the thing with relationship is um, in a relationship there's always more to discover about the person once you stop discovering anything about them there's no relationship <laughs> so actually what you're admitting that there's something beyond what you understand almost as you come into a some it, so when we talk about we're coming into this as a relational thing we're not saying it's just random and there's no logic what we're saying is there's something that i'm still discovering about this person i.e in god and therefore there will never be any there'll never be a time when i fully understood him so i'm always in but that that always means therefore there's there's something he can see i can't he's going to behave in ways that are beyond what i can anticipate um so i somehow have to accept that and kind of that becomes part of the context but anyway um, is the is the um context of the matthew version where it says any of you in my name connected i mean it's a long long question really but with the four times in john where he says if, if you ask anything in my name i'll do it i'll do it within that he says so far you've asked nothing in my name yeah okay all right good good observation that last bit henry yeah the name, and yet they'd, they'd raise the dead they healed the sick and jesus is saying so far You've asked nothing in my name. Well, yeah. You know, I, I, and, and does that depend upon the relation of the name? In other words, we stick it on as a kind of tally sometimes, mm. which we shouldn't. And the name of Jesus is also his authority. And if we haven't got his authority, we yeah. shouldn't ask in his name. I think you're, you're answering correctly, I think, really, Henry, because I think the, we, we, when we talk about when if, if we say, you know, if I, if I go up to someone and say, I rest you in the name of the law, I'm saying I'm, I have the authority of the law to do this. Um, if if you if somebody turned up in the Roman world and and issued a command in the name of an emperor and they didn't have the authority to do it, they would be executed and murdered for it. <laughs> it was a very serious thing. And so I think perhaps just thinking about it, I'm just working this out as you ask the question. But when you said you haven't asked anything in my name, it's presumably as Jesus has commissioned them at this point, he hasn't asked them to do it in his name. He's asked them to do it in the name of the Father. <laughs> but actually he can see and anticipate something coming perhaps where they they recognise their authority because he's going to give it to them at, in Matthew, at the end of Matthew. All authority in heaven and earth has been now given to me, so now you go and make disciples. So your my name is actually shorthand for I come in his commission. That's really what the phrase is. But we, we, as you're quite right, we throw it on as a kind of a, a formula. And I think that the Holy Spirit hadn't yet come in the John passage. And he's saying, look, there's something fantastic going to happen. Yeah. Then you'll be endued with power, which is the authority coming out working. Yeah, no, it's very good. Really good. And as you say, Henry, there's a, there's a whole host of stuff that flows out of that. <laughs> um, but, uh, but good. Did anyone else like to comment or throw a quick question in? So.